Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Presidential Address for Week 8. I'm your host, Lawrence Presman, co-founder of Wager Talk Media, owner of wagertalk.com, sportsmemo.com, and the gold sheet. We've got two videos this week for you, my favorite four sides and my favorite four totals. This is part one, our four side bets, and let's get straight into it. Jacksonville playing Pittsburgh. The line was minus one and a half, and there's a lot of money coming in on Jacksonville. This line has moved to minus two and a half, and I completely understand and agree. We were on the Rams last Sunday against the Steelers, and frankly, I'm still in shock over that game. Even though the Steelers won the game and are four and two on the year, they were dominated by the Rams and frankly, everybody else that's played them so far this year and completely dominated by the Ravens last week. This Steeler team, uh, their offense is a total mess. Pittsburgh is at the bot in the bottom 10 in passing yards, the bottom five in rushing yards, and they are the second worst team in the entire league for yards gained. Pittsburgh is outgain has been outgained in every single game so far this year. Now they play the Jags who are rolling right now, feeling good about themselves and not having any issues scoring points. The Jags have put up 31, 37, 25, and 23 points in their last four games. Now I know, I get it. Pittsburgh's D is really good. Uh, but so is New Orleans. They put up 31 on the Saints. Buffalo's D is supposed to be really good. They put up 25 on them. And the Falcons D is supposed to be really good and they put up 25 on them. So let's assume, argument's sake, that Pittsburgh's D is better than the Saints, Buffalo, and Atlanta. The Jags are still gonna get their points, guys. I'm guessing they put up somewhere around 24. So if the Jags put up 24, how do the Steelers win this game? They have only gone over the total of 24 points once this entire year. That was against Cleveland, and it was because of their defense. Their D did it again Sunday against the Rams. There is not one single game this season where the Pittsburgh offense has put up 24 points, and it'll be exactly the same this weekend. The Jags, they come into this game winning four in a row, and this is one highly focused team who feels like they have a big playoff run in them. I also do not think this is a bad spot to bet the Jags as they are on a 10-day rest, having played Thursday, and are coming and not coming off any type of emotional division game. The bottom line is I just can't see how Pittsburgh hangs with this team. Tomlin's a great coach, a coaching god. I get it. But the Jags are an up-and-coming team, while the Steelers, even at 4-2, and two, is a team that will struggle to make the playoffs. We're basically getting a pick em here. Well, we were. And now it's minus 2.5. And, and I think this game is 27-13 to 13 written all over it. I do lean to the under in this game. It is at 42, but I prefer the side. Take Jacksonville minus 2.5 against Pittsburgh. Okay, guys, before we get into the next game, and we're going to look at Indianapolis, New Orleans, Denver, and Kansas City, and Minnesota against Green Bay, I do want to give you a recap of how last week went, and I have a promo code for you all. So, last week, disaster. I went 2-6. and six. That's 2-6 and six in my eight plays I gave out on the show. My first really bad week of the year. My total record on every show I've given out on the NFL presidential address is 51 wins and 38 losses. That's a 57% win record, and I am very proud of that. And We should have a huge bounce back week for week eight. As for your promo code, I got a 5% teaser tonight. I ne Not tonight, this week. I never release these five these teasers at 5%. I've only had three in my entire life that were 5% teasers, and I'm two and one in them. This is my favorite bet all year, and I have a promo code for you guys. It is TEASE15. That's T-E-A-S-E-15. 
you get $15 off of my NFL 5% teaser. Take advantage of that. It makes the play 20 bucks. Let's all bet this together and win together. Okay, let's continue. Let's look at New Orleans. The Saints going into Indianapolis. And Indianapolis is minus one with a total error of 43 and a half. Let me start by saying that in general, the refs were horrendous last Sunday, and they frankly have been horrendous all year. The Rams got screwed out of at least a comeback opportunity, not once, but twice on the same drive. While the Colts, they literally won the football game last week, but the refs made up some BS holding call to give the ball back to Cleveland. Even though Indy has lost their last two games, this is a team that I'm impressed with. They've been in every game this entire year. And if you take away the turnovers, could easily be four and three or even five and two on the season. The thing here is there was no expectations coming into the season for the Colts team. This is a team that really we're not looking for the Super Bowl or even to make the playoffs. And I think that bodes well for betting on them right now. This is a team that has to feel really good about themselves right now. They have to be surprised at how they've started this season. And they're in position to make a get-into-the-playoffs type run. Conversely, the Saints came into the year thinking they could win their division. And not much has gone right for this team. The Saints just lost to the Jags and to Houston. And they were able to put up a whole nine points against Tampa Bay. Even this supposed to be great New Orleans D has let them down allowing 31 against the Jags and 20 against the Texans. The issue here is how many times will Minshew turn the ball over? He turned it over four times against Cleveland and three times against the Jags. And my guess, and yes, it's only a guess, is that he turns the ball over one time against the Saints. Math is math, and a roller coaster always goes up before it goes down. The odds are very much in Menchu's favor as no one turns the ball over 10 times in three games. The bottom line here is this Indy offense is in sync. The Saints offense is not. I'm going to take the home team here as we start to watch the New Orleans Saints season unravel. Take Indy minus one against New Orleans. Now we turn our attention to Kansas City going into Denver. The line here is Kansas City minus seven and a half. And there are eights on board with a grand total of 46 points. I bet the Chargers last week and we lost. And I really felt like KC's offense was out of sync and something was wrong with it. They proved me wrong. And it looks like they are back at the top of the league <clears throat> as one of the best teams in football. With that said, this is way too many points for them to lay on the road and after a huge game against their biggest nemesis in the Chargers. Now, I know this is a division game and Casey should get up for it, but again, it's just too many points. We bet the under in the Denver Green Bay game last week, cashed that easy, and I argued that Denver, once they got their starters back, would be a much better defensive unit than they were in their first four games. I would also argue that the more games under their belt in Peyton's new system, the better this team will become. Denver just went into Kansas City two weeks ago, and they lost 19-8. to But their D was incredible, and they showed just how good they were again this past week, holding Green Bay to 17. The Broncos also found a run game on Sunday against Green Bay and put up 145 rushing yards. Now, I am not suggesting Denver is better than KC in anything, and I do think KC will win this game. But I think it'll be closer than people think, and I do like the points here. Take away KC's game, and Denver has been scoring points. They put up 19 against Green Bay, 21 against the Jets, 31 against the Bears, 20 against Miami, and 33 against Washington. The longer this season goes, the more rhythm this offense will have and the more points they will put up. I think Denver can score 21 to 24 on KC this Sunday, and I think they'll hold KC to under 27. KC has gone over 27 only twice this entire year, once last week against the Chargers, 
and then they did put up 41 on Chicago. KC has scored less than 23 points four of their six games this season. I think we see a 27-21, 24-21, 27-24 type game. Denver covers every one of those numbers. Take Denver plus the eight against Kansas City. Now we turn our attention to Minnesota going into Green Bay. Green Bay was minus two and a half until Minnesota upset San Fran last night. And the line now is minus one. I was going to, I had written this all before the line moved and I was absolutely flabbergasted that Green Bay was a favorite. I don't think Green Bay should be a favorite against Arizona. I think this Green Bay team is terrible. And I've been telling you that all year. From an offensive perspective, they are middle of the pack, averaging 21 points per game. And while their D is bottom half of the league, they have only they allow opponents 22 points a game. Green Bay has lost three games in a row, putting 17 up against the Broncos, 13 against the Raiders, and 20 against the Lions. Before that, 18 against the Saints. This Minnesota team can score. This Minnesota team can move the ball. We saw this Minnesota team play San Fran's vaunted D. They were able to move the ball up and down the field. I don't even think they needed their punter, and that's without Justin Jefferson. Another angle I love is betting against teams who have completely dominated their division when it's time for them to suck. I've bet against the Pats in division games for the last three years, and I plan on doing the same with Green Bay. The bottom line here is Green Bay has owned this division for 20 plus years, and now it's time for their division rivals to take their anger, frustration, and resentment out on them. The bottom line here is Minnesota can score, Green Bay can't. Minnesota, while they both have the same, Minnesota and Green Bay, they both have a similar defense. Uh, I just cannot understand how this line is even Minnesota minus one. The only game Green Bay has won in their last four was by one point. This Green Bay team is crap. This Minnesota team is better than their record. I think Minnesota wins this game easy. Take Minnesota minus the one against Green Bay. That's it for the four sides for week eight. There is another video coming tomorrow that will be my four totals. Guys, make sure to use the promo code TEAS15. I do have a 5% teaser up for week eight. You guys get $15 off of it with the promo code TEAS15. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on our next video.